Good evening. This is Maestro Patello with a Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite podcast. Today we have a 1v1 on Judgment of Carrion. Our first player right here today is Dark Riku, playing as the Space Marine Apothecary, a healing commander. And his opponent is Noisy, playing as Sindri, Trollface, Chaos Sorcerer, a spellcasting commander. So this right here was actually game one of the quarterfinals from our July monthly Rumble tournament. From that tournament, we had a few disappointing no-shows, mainly Tiger and Texcalibur, but we did have the pleasure of having a player like Noisy enter, who does not often enter uh, these 1v1 tournaments, or tournaments in general, but he is a phenomenally good player. Now, Noisy is known for long tier one, unconventional builds, and it's something that makes him a very, very interesting player to watch. And of course, I'm always interested in pretty much anything sorcerer. So, Noisy has opened with a triple heretic build. One, two, three. This is something that is not definitely mostly seen among high-level players. I've mostly seen it out of specifically Noisy and Tex. Um, you don't often see it, not as much around by mid-level players. The most common cast build, uh, both for probably mid-level players and high-level players, is um, a single, her two heretics and a single cast Space Marine squad. Noisy has gone for three heretics. Now, what what this gives him is, first of all, he can put a lot of units out on the field very quickly. These heretics are only two ten to purchase, so you can buy. Um, you can actually buy both of them just with the starting 500 requisition that you start the game with. And you can very quickly put those three units out on the field. This gives you potentially an early edge on map control since you have three units out on the field very quickly. Um, it also, generally, the reason standard Space Marine, Chaos Space Marine builds include two heretics, um, especially for the Sorcerer, is that you often need two heretics for actually fighting. Now, with three heretics, you can still have those two heretics for fighting, and then you can have another one that is pretty much dedicated to map control. So if we take a look, yeah, we have just one kind of going up behind. This one, probably the map control heretic. Um, since, especially with the sorcerer specifically, one of the reasons you want two heretics is for to do double worship, and you can't... That's inevitably something that's going to sacrifice map control. It's also something that um, makes your build somewhat static because you can't move while worshiping. Um, additionally, compared to, say, compared to Dark Riku's opening build, it's something that the triple heretic opening is much squishier, but also a lot harder to hit it. And since it's also an opening of three melee units, that also puts Dark Riku in a situation where, as we can see, he's already basically being pushed off the map. Uh, Noisy has taken most of the map because when you have something like Heretics, you have a lot of aggressive potential to push forward. Now, if Riku is going for his standard opening of going the Scout Tax Scout into the ASM, he potentially had a choice there where if he wanted to invest in melee control, shotguns to slow the Heretics down, that was something that would delay his assault space marines. He chose not to invest in the, that early melee control in the form of that sh those shotguns, so he could get the Assault Space Marines out uh, as soon as he could. Now, one of the consequences of that is that, basically, he kind of lost the early map control war. Um, Noisy just had the better end of map control to start out. And by e you're either you're putting that your opponent in that situation, in this case, Noisy's putting Riku in that situation, where he could either invest in heretic counters early on to slow the advance of the heretics, or he could try to get the Assault Space Marines out. Now, the Assault Space Marines are one of the biggest challenges uh, that Chaos, and especially the Sorcerer, has to deal with from this matchup early on. So he's either... Noisy is either delaying... He's either making... forcing Riku into the situation of being pushed back by the triple heretics, or delaying his Assault Space Marines, which is one of the most difficult things that uh, Forecast to deal with in this matchup. And of course, by having triple Heretics instead of just two, um, that's also just one of the best ways to counter-initiate against the Assault Space Marine jump. Now, another thing about that triple Heretic build um, is that Noisy also gets 
early ability to bash generators with even without uh, any kind of flame reunion. And we see right here he's bashing the generators. He's actually stalling out the rest of Riku's units with his Sorcerer and also with his Havocs. So this is one of the things that he's not committing everything to bashing generators. He's just committing his best unit for his best units for bashing generators while he has the rest of his units that are that can um, that are generally a bit more durable or better at stalling out. He's having them stall out the rest of Riku's army and he actually gets a full gen bash up. Now again, Riku, Noisy is going for a long tier one. So he's spending a lot in tier one. And there is the risk there, like I like, there's just the risk that if you're investing in a long tier 1, there is the risk that your opponent is going to make it to tier 2 before you, and then they'll force you back with, like, a vehicle or something. Now, one of the ways... No what Noisy is counting on is that he's counting on winning on map control. Uh, the map control has actually gone slightly in Riku's favor overall, but Noisy just got a full gen bash off, and that's another thing. Again, that's part of what Noisy is counting on by going for this longer tier 1 build. Um, being able to win on map control and then being able to punish uh, on the winning map control with a generator bash. So he's got... Noisy is sitting on a full power farm, whereas um, Dark Riku currently has... He not, doesn't even have a captured power point. He's trying to get one back, and he has invested in shotguns. And for the most part, I'm not entirely sure if he has much of a choice as far as not investing in shotguns. And Riku is definitely one of those Space Marine players who will actually try to forego shotguns entirely in Tier 1 if he can so that he can save on that power um, and actually utilize the max range of the bolters for kiting. Um, but this is a situation where against three heretics, as well as that sorcerer who's now teleporting in, he really needs at, w at least one shotgun and he might even get another one. Now, Riku has chosen to get the Purification Rites, which is a good upgrade overall and specifically in this matchup for, again, another way of deterring the Heretics. And certainly one of the ways that, like, the maximum amount of melee counters you could get out of the Apothecary in Tier 1, you would be getting shotguns, um, two shotguns, as well as the Purification Rites on the Apothecary, and maybe even a Devastator. Now, unfortunately, I missed a Tactical Marine Squad dying to some Heretics. And that's actually just yet another one of the additional benefits of Noisy going for this triple heretic build, which is you get a lot of power to kill things on retreat. So you get a lot of early wipe potential. And that is something that can very early on turn the game in your favor. And this is something I know a lot from personal experience. You can often just position heretics in a way so that not even during an actual engagement, but just position them in a way when you know you're going to win an engagement, and then you can put the heretics in a retreat path where you can actually expect to wipe out a unit. It's not too dissimilar from Banshee usage, um, but you are the, the heretics don't really have the ability to give chase um, the way that Banshees do, but what they do have is better um, like front-loaded burst damage on retreat if you have as much as two or even three heretics swarming a unit on retreat and then hitting Doom Blast. Um, you just have the ability to take out a unit like very quickly, even something very tough like Tactical Marines. And Noisy has actually gone for his sixth Tier 1 unit. Now he was already winning on map control without this Noise Marine squad. Um, he's already gotten some of his early wipes and he's already been getting gen bashes on the power of those that triple heretic build. And with these Noise Marines, he's really effectively cementing his advantage over Riku. Where he's already has the power to win engagements and keep Riku off the field. And if Riku ever even tries to put up a generator, um, Ever even tries to put up a generator, there's almost no way he can keep a generator, uh, a generator or a power farm up. Really. And these noise marines are actually also specifically good for dealing with um, typically ranged heavy early space marine openings because they shut down ranged units um, with their sonic with their sonic blasters 
They have longer range than shotgun scouts and will prevent the shotgun scouts from using their abilities. So that's also a way where you can use that on shotgun scouts to allow heretics to get into melee. Um, also shutting down the much more the much more powerful incoming range fire from those tactical marines. Now additionally, when you have something like a Havoc, the Havoc is the jump target priority for the Assault Space Marines. And usually, unless you have at least two Heretics there, um, if not three, there's actually not a whole lot to contest the, that Assault Space Marine and keep it on the field, especially when you have the Apothecary um, behind with the Purification Rites on his heel, ready to knock back any counter-initiating Heretics. And then usually, the Havoc is usually, at least in Tier 1, um, before the Sorcerer has Chains of Torment, the Havoc is going to be forced to retreat once it gets jumped. Now, one of the great things about having the Noise Marines is that you're giving your opponent two potential jump targets. Two targets that really, in a way, almost need to be jumped or that you really want to be jumped because you need to shut them down immediately because those are the things that are going to hold up the rest of your army the Havocs by suppressing a lot of units, and then the Noise Marines by shutting down your ranged units and preventing them from firing. So you give your opponent two jump targets, and then they're, they're already committed to one, and the other one still nevertheless gets to do its job. So that's one of the reasons why it's good to have both these Havocs uh, and these Noise Marines. Specifically, it's often good to have these in combination. You have the Havoc in the back, the Noise Marine in the front, obviously, since it has lower range. And then the noise marine can often just go ahead, walk up and, and, uh, and use its sonic blaster um, just as we are losing a requisition point. as the other units get, as your opponent's enemy units get suppressed. Now we have a plasma cannon out for Dark Reaper. That plasma cannon is good as VP denial since it can, you have sight on a VP that you own. Oh, and that's going to be devastating. You have sight on any VP that you own, so you can always just deny a VP very easily by putting uh, a plasma cannon at maximum range. Now, this plasma cannon is also something that's good kind of as a, um, a resource sink when you have an excess of requisition and not enough power, since it's, it's something that costs no power whatsoever. But we see Noisy has already started taking this out. Um, he's actually put, he's used the Dark Flames Global, and he's even putting Coruscating Flames on himself to use as a garrison counter. Unfortunately, both of those have run out. Um, and he's even putting a, a Summoning Circle right here to kind of deny the support approach, the reinforcement approach, by the rest of Riku's units, as well as making it so that the Devastators can't get out. Um, otherwise, they would just... Um, die from these blood letters on retreat. As it is, Noisy already took them out with his Blastmaster Noise Marine, and that putting that Blastmaster on the Noise Marines is a very good way of making them scale. And you change them from a close range unit to a long range one. So at this point, the game has pretty much probably gone in um, Noisy's favor. Obviously not the closest game, but it's very, very interesting to me. It, it is definitely an example of high-level play and very unconventional play as well. Even from other very good players, um, you generally don't see the kind of things that Noisy is doing. Maybe from Tex, and Tex is also another person who plays the Sorcerer and often does get similar builds to um, Noisy, um, but his builds are usually still a little bit shorter. Uh, and Tex will generally only extend his builds to five or six units um, if he needs it, if he needs those extra noise marines. Um, Tex will more likely go for three heretics uh, into, a ha into a Havoc and then try to ride that to tier two. Whereas Noisy very, very regularly goes for these extended builds, even with pretty much any race and any commander, he goes for very, very long tier one builds. But specifically with the Sorcerer, um, this is definitely a hero who you, I think you actually often want to go for these more extended tier one builds. And he's... And Noisy also... Noisy is 
one of the things I didn't uh, mention in a lot of this, but he's a very proactive player. He's getting this Blood Crusher without necessarily worrying about, like, oh, how is Riku going to counter that? He's already created a situation where Riku is not going to be able to adequately counter this Blood Crusher. And if you saw in the build screen, he was throwing a Dreadnought on top of that. So that was a fairly quick game, about 15 minutes, um, dominating play from Noisy, very interesting to watch, very educational, um, certainly for me and hopefully for you too. Hope you enjoyed the cast, and I will follow this up with the next game of Dark Riku versus Noisy. The third one um, of Dark Riku against Noisy's Play Champion is of course up on Indrid's channel, which is highly recommended. That was the game of the tournament. Anyway, have a good night.